Hello, my name is Stephen Smith, CPA. I am a QuickBooks expert and the owner of Controllership Solutions. In this video, we're going to answer the question to sync or not to sync QuickBooks Online in Jobber. It's a very popular question on message boards, and it's a question that a lot of Jobber users have when they're growing their business and deciding whether or not to take that leap. Is it worth the hassle? And to help evaluate that decision, we're going to talk about the strengths and differences between QuickBooks Online and Jobber. We're going to recap the revenue cycle. We're going to deep dive on the difference between cash basis and accrual basis accounting. And finally, we're going to interview a Power Jobber user who does sync with QuickBooks Online and who did not use to sync with QuickBooks Online and get their take on it. Let's get started. First, a recap of the differences between Jobber and QuickBooks Online. Jobber is what we'll refer to as your front end software. QuickBooks Online, or QBO, is what we'll refer to as your back office software systems. And it's all part of your accounting technology stack. Jobber will be used for your scheduling, your dispatching. You'll probably estimate and send out invoices. You'll even receive payments if you're using Jobber Payments. And it will house all of your information regarding jobs and client data. QuickBooks Online is a general ledger program that's used by hundreds, if not thousands, and millions of different businesses. It produces a profit and loss, it produces the balance sheet, accounts payable, and other reports that are not found in Jobber. If you have payroll, if you have sales tax issues, if you have overhead payments like rent or equipment purchases, all that is going to house in QuickBooks. It also syncs with thousands of other applications beyond Jobber. So if you want advanced reporting needs or if you want to automate your bill pay, QuickBooks Online can help integrate and streamline those processes. So let's review a little bit about what the revenue cycle is and what Jobber does and what QuickBooks does. Typically, when you meet with a new client, you'll give them an estimate. If they accept the estimate, you'll, you'll do the work and then you'll provide them an invoice. That's when you've earned your money. Then they'll pay you either immediately or perhaps with some terms, you'll take that payment and you'll either deposit it physically if they're checks or it will be an automated process of depositing into your bank account, which is then reconciled against payments for accuracy so that your profit and loss in your balance sheet and other reports in your general ledger program are accurate. So let's talk about the difference between the payment and the deposit date, because that is cash basis versus accrual basis. So cash basis accounts is what you'll probably do when you're just starting out. Someone gets paid, someone pays you, you deposit the check, you recognize income. Fantastic. Accrual basis is going to be as you grow and you get a little bit larger and you start issuing invoices, well, that's when you've done the work, that's when you've recognized the income, but there might be a lag between when they pay that invoice and when it deposits into your bank. By definition, cash basis is you recognize income when it deposits into the bank, accrual basis, you recognize income when it's earned after you've completed the work. And when you're doing your books, when you deposit the income into your bank account, if that's when you record it, you're on cash basis. If, however, you're recording your income with invoices, the date of that invoice becomes the day that you recognize your revenue. There's pros and cons to each. As I've said, cash basis is easier. You get the payments, they go into your bank. Excellent. That's the number that you would see on your profit and loss when reviewing a, a P&L or an income statement number. However, it may not match what your expectations are. <clears throat> if you're really busy in September or October, and then you take November off, and people pay you in December, 
it's going to look really strange when you don't have any money in the, in the months where you thought you were busy and then you have deposits and that's when you're looking at a profit and loss. Or if you're crossing over a year, if you're busy in one year and then they wait till the next year to pay you, do you consider that revenue in the work, year that you did the work or the year that you they paid you? That's cash basis versus accrual basis. Accrual basis is proper gap accounting. If you're a large company, you are required to use gap. That's the generally accepted accounting principles. And the reason is, is that it does provide better analysis when you're looking at sales trends. You'll be able to instantly see if that was a good week or if that was a good month because you're recognizing the revenue when you invoice. The downside is that there is a little bit of an effort when it comes to syncing. So let's discuss and deep dive into what is the sync. So when we're looking at our revenue, it comes down to invoice and payments. So those are the two fields that Jobber will push to QuickBooks Online. And it's a one directional push. It's pushing over several fields, which we'll review. That is exactly what you're looking to match between the two different systems. Estimates will not go over to QuickBooks nor will deposits. So is, we're just talking about invoices and payments. Specifically, what is it about the invoice that you need in QuickBooks? And that's specifically customer. You'll get an invoice number, an invoice date, services, products, sales tax, and discounts. So those are the fields that will go over from the invoice template or the invoice form from Jobber to QuickBooks. Now, what also pushes are the payments. So the payments, the payment date, and the payment method. So if they're using Jobber payments, that will push, push over. If they paid with a check and you put that check into Jobber, that will go over. If they're using cash or barter or some other method, there's also ways to tailor that. Now, what does not sync are the deposits. So if you have several de payments for several invoices on Jobber payments in one day or several checks for several different invoices in one day, they will all sync. But there is a difference between the payments and what actually gets deposited into the bank on a deposit. And that is a deposit that does not sync. That is where some of the effort comes into play. Now, this video is not going to address any of the technical or mechanical issues. We will do a part two and we will address those. But this video is just the theory of basically whether or not to sync or not to sync in the cash basis versus accrual basis differences. But one of the things that you do want to keep in mind when you deal with those mechanics is that the merchant fees that Jobber Payments takes, that does not sync. So that's what makes a little bit of the effort. Now let's talk a little bit about the deposits because this is where your three options come into, into play. When finally answering the question, do you sync or do you not sync? Well, if you don't sync, you by default in QuickBooks will be cash basis, meaning that when jobber payments or checks or cash are deposited into the bank, that is the day that your QuickBooks will pick up as revenue and thus you are a cash basis individual you are a cash basis business that is no question about it the quickest way to do it if however you are syncing bringing over invoices and bringing over payments and recognizing income when you do the work and provide the services you are doing accrual based accounting that means that you are manually entering deposits and merchant fees and reconciling those and you are recognizing the income when you perform the work now there is some quasi half and half method a third option and that is you can sync but you're not going to go through the additional effort of recording the merchant fees and the individual deposits each and every time instead you're going to map everything to what's known as a clearing account and then when you make deposits into your actual bank account and you reconcile that actual account, you'll draw upon 
that clearing account. This is a debit credit thing in QuickBooks. It saves some time because you're not manually entering all of the merchant fees and you're not lining up each and every deposit. However, the downside to that shortcut is that it does leave you somewhat exposed to potential errors and difficulties when you have syncs or feeds. For instance, if you sync and then change an invoice for whatever reason in Jobber, it's done. You, you don't, it doesn't push again. Uh, also, you will have to manually go in and periodically book a large number of fees because the clearing account balance will grow and grow and grow because Jobber will only remit a net amount of the proceeds. So those are your three options to sync or not to sync. Do you not sync, by which, in which case you are a cash basis? Do you sync and go through the additional efforts, in which case you are an accrual-based uh, reporter? Or do you want to sync with the use of a clearing account, which somewhat gives you a cruel basis, but you're going to have to do some adjustments to your fees. So I am an accounting professional. I am a CPA. I am, of course, uh, partial and advocate that any growing business, any scalable business should use an accrual based method of accounting. However, let's take some time and talk with uh, Christine Hodge, the CEO of Clearview Washing and see what her thoughts are. We are now welcomed by Christine Hodge, CEO of Clearview Washing. And Christine is, in my opinion, a success story. Christine, why don't you tell us a little bit about Clearview? Sure. Well, hi, everybody. My name is Christine Hodge. I'm the CEO at Clearview Washing. Thank you, Stephen, for having me. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Clearview Washing. We're a small home service company based in Freehold, New Jersey. Um, we employ about 25 people and we specialize in commercial and residential exterior cleaning. Excellent. Excellent. So this story, this seminar was about syncing Jobber to QuickBooks Online. Why don't you tell us about what led you to the sync process and how has it been going? Absolutely. So um, basically, as a small business, we've been in business for 18 years, and we realized about three to four years ago that we had to stop using paper and kind of have our technology meet our growth. So we felt like we were growing, but we were behind in terms of technology, and we felt like the push we needed to take us to the next level would be through technology. So what we did is we started with Jobber and then we began to add on. So um, with that came QuickBooks. We added on Responsibid and we added on Nice Job. Um, QuickBooks was key because we felt like we were making money and increasing our growth revenue, but we didn't know how we were spending it. We were spending it in ways that as business owners and as CEO and as the ownership team, we needed to uh, make payroll and in marketing, but we didn't have any percentage points. We had no documentation to refer to. And especially at the end of the year and around tax time, um, we didn't have an easy way of handing things over to an accountant and saying, well, how did we do this year? And I think that it was very important for us to strategize that. So in syncing with QuickBooks and working with you, Stephen, um, we've now been able to see where our money is being spent and how it's being spent. And I think that's the most important aspect of the sync. Excellent. Excellent. And how about the process of the sync? Uh, was, it, uh, was it intimidating the first time? And how has the ongoing mechanics and dealing with the technology learning curve of the Jobber to QuickBooks Online sync? Um, intimidating, probably for most. I'm like an odd CEO. Like I love the challenge and I love trying something new. So it was actually really exciting to me, but I can see it being really intimidating to a small home service company. So I don't, I do want to put that up front. Um, it takes a lot of back end work and setup um, and it takes a lot of time. So you have to be willing to commit the time into setting up the sink and then you'll just see success. I mean, we set up the sink 
uh, what was it, a year and a half ago, maybe at this mm-hmm. point. And now it just feels easy. But the beginning is a little bit tough and you have to allocate the time and you have to spend a lot of time. For me, I spent a lot of time on the phone with you, Stephen, um, and in coaching and mentoring and going back and forth with Jobber to work out the kinks. But it is completely worth the upfront time and effort to set yourself up for success because now we don't have to think about it. Now we just have to maintain it and watch, you know, our numbers grow. Excellent. Excellent. So the benefits have exceeded the costs and the struggle of the of the technology. And I think that's a common thread and a common story with all businesses today um, that want to be successful. There has to be technology. There has to be uh, an acceptance of new, uh, new, new software in order to succeed and to get ahead. Excellent. All right, Christine, thank you very much. Of course. Thank you for having me.